Hello everyone. Well, I've been uh, testing the roof fan. We had some rain yesterday and uh, there's no leaks, so that's good. Mind you, the amount of silicon up there, I'm not surprised. Um, so what I've been doing is just putting the rest of the roof insulation in. Um, I'll show you how. Um, so the roof vent went in, so I've put the rest of the, been trying to put the rest of the uh, roof insulation in. And at the front here, this bows in about three different directions. Bows that way, that way, and right in the corners it bows. Um, this overhead storage locker, um, what I've done when I've done it inside, I carpeted the inside. Um, so it makes it a little bit warmer inside. I'll put a king span up on each each end. I've got to seal that up. Um, this was like the final fitting. I trimmed the bottom. Uh, and that's got to come back out. Um, as soon as I get some uh, some sort of sealant on it, I think I'm going to go, I might go for bry wax. Uh, I might go for a bry wax on there. So yeah, um, that's got to come back out, it's got to be rubbed down. Again, I'm waiting for some uh, materials to come for me sander, because me, <coughs> the, uh, the, sand, the plate on the sander is completely knackered. So um, we have to order a new plate for it. That should be here tomorrow. And um, get this rubbed down. Uh, and sealed up with some wax. I've got some uh, ceiling cladding coming today. Um, so up the back here. Got a little bit more. Uh, insulation to put in here, a batten on there, um, and then full tape it, like I've done with this one. Uh, full tape all the joints. So that's where I am at the moment. Uh, I went down there. I've got to put some insulation on the front of that. Some uh, rigid insulation I'm going to chuck on the front of that as well. In the front of that. So that's where I am with it at the moment. <coughs> so let's, uh, let's crack on see if I can get some more done while I've got a bit of time. So, I've been sealing up these, uh, these beams with the... Uh, the ceiling insulation meets the beams and the battens and uh, I've just been sealing that up with the foil tape and it was a bit tricky because when I come out here this morning early it was it was cold it's a cold October morning so um, there was there was moisture on the on the beams um, so I had to wait until it warmed up a little bit wiped them all down, then I sealed it up. Um, I'm going to put some around this wooden panel um, where the joins are. But I can't seal the front one up yet um, properly, the other side of this, because I'm waiting for some materials to arrive. Um, so that I can I've got to take that front fascia back down, or we'll take the ceiling insulation down, take that front fascia down, rub it all down with a sander, get some stain and stain it, then it can go back up and be fixed in, the ceiling can then go back up, and then I can start putting the ceiling in, which I'm gagging to do. Like It's like when I was doing the floor, I just wanted to get it finished. It was every time I tried to do something, something else come up, and I had to do something else to the floor before I could do whatever before I could put it in. And there's similar things happen to the ceiling. There's a few jobs to be done, 
before the ceiling cladding goes in. I've, I've got the ceiling cladding, it was delivered yesterday. Um, so I've got the ceiling cladding, it's, uh, it's only that cheap thin stuff, but I had to go for that really. Uh, if I want a cladding effect, I had to go for the cheap stuff because of the ceiling height. Um, it's, only, it's only about eight or nine mil thick. Um, other than that, it would just be a sheet ceiling, which I, wasn't the sort of effect I was after. So I'll, I'll try the cladding, see how I get on with that. But running out of decent weather, um, it's, it's got to be, uh, it'll be stained outside. Um, I don't really want to put it up. They'd be doing all this above my head if I can help it. You know, and if I do run out of good weather, it's going to have, that's what's going to have to happen. I'm going to have to get the ceiling up and worry about staining it another time. Um, but I'll try if I get some, keep getting some decent weather. But for now, I'm going to carry on sealing some of these where the joins are, because um, rather than go out and buy a whole new sheet of uh, Kingspan, in some places I've made it up with um, offcuts to save me going out and spending another 30 quid on a sheet. I won't, there's nowhere else really, I don't think I'm going to use it. So, um, that's a job jobbed. So, pretty much, um, I'm almost ready, apart from, apart from getting that front fascia done and fixed in, apart from that really, I'm, uh, and a bit of taping to do, I'm almost ready for the ceiling to go up. So, uh, that's going to be exciting to see that go up. I'm looking forward to uh, after the ceiling goes up or somewhere in between because I'm going to get a get the ceiling I'm going to get the ceiling partially up so I'll start in the center and I'll be working my way out so when I get the ceiling sort of partially up I'm then going to be putting some big two by two battens along straight along the walls either side all the way along um, and they're basically just going to be fixing points. So um, if I need ever need to fix in uh, high level cupboards or any other sort of fixings, I've got something behind there, wood behind there to fix it to. And it'd be solid, strong wood. So uh, that'd be going in. And uh, so that's where I am with it at the moment, really. Still lots to do. Still just about enjoying it. <laughs> My experiment to find a wood stain. This is a technique I saw online. It is, I want, <coughs> I want to stain the wood a weathered finish. That's the color I want. That weathered, it's like a gray color. I've tried lots of different techniques. Um, let's just put this up here, England. Yeah, I've tried lots of different techniques. Nothing is working, and I found this technique online. Basically, you use distilled white vinegar. You use um, very fine wire wool. You put the wire wall inside the white vinegar mixture and you leave it. Now, depending on how long you leave it, depends on what colour you're going to get. Some people leave it a couple of hours, overnight, five days. You can end up with all sorts of different colours. Um, so I've got to keep timing it and then coming out and testing a little bit, timing it, testing a little bit. So going to let that, I don't know how much wire wall to put in there. Some people cut it up into little pieces and then it seems to go up really dark really quickly. I've left it in one lump so I can pull the whole thing out. Anyway, we'll leave that to uh, simmer. Another technique I've been trying on wood is a thing called, and you have to forgive, forgive my Japanese, Shoshushi Barn, 
I think it's called. Wood burning, basically. So, it's to turn a piece of wood like that into a piece of wood like that. I can't quite get it right. Um, sometimes it's too dark. You end up with these patches, these blotches, like this, it's no good. That's about the closest I've got to it. Um, again, I think it's going to be too dark for that sort of effect. But basically, you just use a blowtorch, um, go over it with a blowtorch, and it burns brings out the grain. It's a nice effect, but I think it's going to be a bit too dark. These are my other experimental pieces, like this and like that. Some of it's had a, that's had a stain on first, same as that's had a stain on first and then it was burnt. I've tried all sorts, but I think it's going to be too dark, far too dark. But that effect, that's about the closest I've got to it, like that. It's quite nice. So I've got some off cuts of pine cladding here. So I shall wait until that is brewed for some time and then we'll come back to it. See what sort of effect we get, see what colour we get. But it's uh, starting to bubble a little bit. In there. Not very much though. I might put another couple of bits of uh, other bits of wire wool in there, but we'll see. We'll come back to it.